Um, my name is Brynn. I am a registered dietitian. Uh, as mentioned, I've been with Kaiser Permanente here in Modesto for almost 15 years now. Um, while I do have a special interest in diabetes, uh, my experience range, ranges far and wide. Um, I will say that neuropathy does strike close to home for me. My uh, father-in-law has an idiopathic neuropathy in his feet, and so he is gradually um, getting closer to not being able to walk as well as he once did. Um, and while I don't have neuropathy, I do have multiple sclerosis, and so my nerves are oftentimes angry. Uh, so I certainly understand the, the feeling of having um, some altered nerve sensation. So today, we're not going to get complicated. We're not going to get too crazy into anything, any uh, special diets. We're going to do a simple guide to healthy eating because how many of you are confused about what is healthy? <laughs> raise your hand. Everybody, raise your hand. Yeah. So every day in the news, there's some new headline. Your friend knows the knows the exact way to cure your every ale by some new diet or some new supplement over the counter. Um, so we're going to do our best to try to clear that up for you because, is this going? There you go. The nutrition world is tricky. There we go. Uh, so this little meme here is asking, saying, so what you're saying is even though it's sweetened with real sugar, it's organic and it's non-GMO, it's still a soda, right? <laughs> so those little catchphrases, those little terms, they uh, kind of draw you in, right? So you think, oh, it's uh, organic, must be healthy. It's uh, non-GMO, must be healthy. <laughs> Not always the case. So we'll take some time to iron that out. So what we're going to look at today is um, some tips on making healthy eating easy, uh, myths about healthy eating. So how many of you think that healthy eating is too expensive? Oh, not too many hands go up. Usually everyone's like, yeah, I can't eat healthy. It's too expensive. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, too hard? It, it could be. Uh, it can be time consuming, no doubt about that. Too boring. Oh, come on. Is it really that boring? Okay. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about how to be aware of some of those fads and promises out there that can draw you in with some really good words and um, tricks that make you think that what you're gonna what you're buying is the cure to the next thing that you have, okay? So first thing we're going to do, I guess I keep hitting this in the wrong place. There we go. Um, so I have a 10-year-old. He plays baseball, and he never goes out onto the ball field without a warm-up first. Um, you guys already had lunch, so you're fairly warmed up. I don't know if that means you're like sleepy or <laughs> what. Um, I'm never sure if it's best to come right before lunch or right after, because either way, you're kind of questionable. So we're going to do a, um, a test your nutrition knowledge quiz. Uh, and so we will see what everybody thinks about these questions. So to help lose weight and increase metabolism, you have to eat every two hours. True or false? false. Okay, very good. All right. So oftentimes you will hear that out, that, you know, message out there, eat every two hours and your metabolism will be revved up and that will help you lose weight. Almost always what happens is that that leads to overeating. So three meals a day, you know, with a snack here and there, uh, but, you know, three meals a day every few hours does the trick. There we go. You should use pink Himalayan salt because it's healthier for you. I hear some trues mixed in there. <laughs> it is false. Uh, salt is salt. Okay, salt is salt. So whether it's pink or wherever it comes from in the world, there is no difference in how your body uses the salt. Okay. Uh, a diet with more plants. So fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and fewer animal products is, uh, has health benefits. True or false? True. That is true, most definitely. So then the follow-up question here, can you think 
of some of the benefits. Name them off. Happier animals. <laughs> animals would be happier, 100%. I get it, yeah, very, very true. I heard lower cholesterol, what else? Fiber. More fiber, very good, which we will cover in detail. It's cheaper. It is cheaper. Your uh, animal products are the most expensive part of your grocery bill. Check it out every time. What else? Bren, yes. reversed my type 2. So there is some emerging evidence that um, a fully plant-based diet can, um, the words are still a little tricky here, reverse, cure, whatever, uh, diabetes, right? So, yep, there is some emerging evidence there. So it can reduce inflammation, absolutely. It does reduce some types of cancer, okay? Uh, lower risk of heart disease and healthier body weight. That's methane gas. <laughs> yes. Uh, juicing is a good way to get healthy. No. False. No. False. Very good. All right. What are you missing when you juice something? Fiber. The fiber. The fiber. Fiber's gone when you turn something into a juice. <coughs> okay. Eating carbohydrates causes weight gain. Yes. 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 False. Okay. If I put in the term too many carbohydrates, then you can all say true. Yeah. All right. And certainly there are better types of carbohydrates, and so we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, we really have to um, stop maligning carbohydrates. Many of them are an extremely healthy way to get in your fiber, phytonutrients that fight cancer, but we have to stay away from the chips and the Pop-Tarts, right? Those aren't carbohydrates that give us many benefits. Whoops. Okay. Why is it Italians are so healthy and they eat a lot of pasta? Why is it Italians are so healthy? So my maiden name is Garzelli, so I'll speak on this for a minute. <laughs> it's true. Uh, so a couple of things. Number one, when you go to Italy specifically, um, what are they doing a lot of? Walking. Walking. Walk everywhere, right? Portion sizes are much smaller. So there is no such thing as an Olive Garden never-ending pasta bowl in Italy. It doesn't exist. In fact, in Italy, they actually have to advertise, um, we serve American portions, if, if they do. So, so pasta is not to blame. It's really the portion, typically, that's to blame that, that we indulge in here in America. So, does that help a little bit? And we'll talk more, there will be a little bit more about that in here. So um, this is another part of our warm-up. I want you to take just a couple of minutes and make a mental note of what you ate yesterday. Okay? And if you have some room on your, I, some of you are taking notes, just jot it down. It um, doesn't have to be detailed. Just jot down a couple of things you can remember that you ate yesterday. Give you some couple of minutes to do that. <laughs> Be honest about it. <laughs> No one else will see your paper, unless you want them to. <laughs> okay, I think I'm just going to use this return button from here on out so I don't have to mess with the clicker. So how would you grade yourself? Would you give yourself an A or an F? A, C. Oh, okay. Yeah, there could be somewhere in between. Maybe yesterday was a mediocre day for whatever reason. All right. Uh, how would I grade you? <laughs> Compare the two, right? You might give yourself an A. I might look at it a little differently. Did you eat any fruits or vegetables yesterday? Did you get any produce? Yes. Okay. Was the produce 
processed somehow or was it fresh? fresh. You're eating fresh. Okay, good. I'm hearing some good things, some yeses. Uh, did most of your meals contain whole, fresh foods in some way or mostly processed? Processed. Here's most, some processed, okay. All right. These are just things that for you to think about, right? It's just food for thought, so to speak. Do you think the way you eat supports your health goals? In other words, are you making food choices that will keep you healthy or make you healthier? Or are they actually detrimental? And hopefully after today, you might have some ideas about some ways you can support your health goals to become healthier. So now it's time to think a little bit about how what you're eating actually compares to the recommendations. So it is a very important to work on getting whole grains. So these are um, grains that aren't processed or refined. This is, this is things like quinoa, bulgur, um, oats, uh, barley, right? So the actual grain, whole wheat bread is fine, nothing against it, I like it, I eat it, but it doesn't really fit the bill. It's, you need the grains, the actual grains, okay? So that's something to think about. Uh, four to eight servings a day, depending on activity and, and things like that. Fruit, two to four servings. Vegetables, three to five. Dairy, two to three servings a day. Or some sort of dairy substitute, all right? So if you're lactose intolerant or choose not to have uh, dairy products, something that replaces those nutrients. You still need the calcium, you still need the vitamin D, okay? So some sort of dairy substitute, lots of them out there, almond milk, soy milk, something like that, all right? And then healthy oils, three to six teaspoons a day. Now in this presentation, it's, it's just a little too short for me to get into a lot of the details about what an actual portion is. So for um, more information about portion control, you can uh, visit the choosemyplate.gov website um, to get some more details about what these portions actually look like, okay? But for a rough estimate, the palm of your hand is always a good guide, okay? Your palm, not Shaquille O'Neal's palm, <laughs> right? Everyone know who that is? I make references and everyone, I, some, I get some blank stares in classes like, who are you talking about? I don't know. Everyone, he can like hold three basketball. I mean, he has big hands. <laughs> so if at any point, and I may already sound like this, if at any point I sound like Charlie Brown's teacher and everything is just mush, right? So wah, 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 and you're not sure what I'm saying, remember this picture. Okay, it's a little prettier back there. I don't know, up here it's not as bright. Um, the whole idea with healthy eating, again, is to simplify. Don't have to make it complicated. Half of your plate, vegetables, as often as you possibly can, okay? Half of your plate, vegetables. And as long as they're not covered in butter, ranch, cheese, right? You can have some, but we're not taught. You need to see your broccoli through the cheese <laughs> is the goal. Okay, so half of your plate vegetables, and you have some pictures up there. Vegetable, it doesn't just have to be over steamed broccoli, okay? Lots of other options out there, whether it's a green salad, cauliflower, zucchini, asparagus, but if you can fill up half your plate with broccoli, it's a lot harder to eat uh, too much lasagna, right? <laughs> so half the plate vegetables, a quarter of the plate, those whole grains we were talking about. Okay, so taking uh, only a quarter of the plate for that, and then another quarter of the plate for some sort of healthy protein, whether it's a chicken breast or tofu or beans, okay? Has anybody seen this before, this type of reference? Yeah, yeah okay. If any of you are Kaiser patients, I'm confident you've seen, <laughs> you've seen this picture before probably. It's all over the place. But it helps, right? So, and I, and I get it, not every meal is like a, is not all the parts are always um, you know, separated out. Maybe you're having tacos or lasagna, but the same principle applies. If you fill up half your plate with vegetables, it saves on the portions of the other foods, okay? 
So here are a few keys to healthy eating. Start by focusing on the positive. So focus on what you should eat. Number one, plenty of fruits and vegetables, all right? Five to nine servings per day, okay? You oftentimes hear the five. That's really a minimum, up to nine. And in some circumstances, you'll hear up to 11 with multiple, multiple, multiple research studies showing that that helps lower blood pressure if you have high blood pressure, okay? In addition to cutting back on the sodium. A serving of vegetables is about half a cup cooked or one cup raw, roughly. One cup raw or half a cup cooked, okay? Choose whole grains over processed grains, so again, if you can picture where it came from uh, out of the ground, right? So there is no Cheeto tree. <laughs> That's a processed grain, right? Yeah, <laughs> someone said teenagers have a Cheeto tree. Yeah, they do. Um, that's a processed grain, right? So um, the more whole the grain where you can actually see it, the better, okay? Um, include beans, tofu, nuts and seeds, and other sources of plant-based protein often. So really what this is saying is if you can have a little less animal protein, uh, that would be a good, a good start in your road to healthy eating. When you do have meat, make sure it's lean meat, right? So uh, lean poultry and fish, you know, we've heard this um, multiple times. Um, one of the main reasons there is that there is a pretty strong link between diets high in red meat and um, certain cancers, especially GI cancers in men. Right? So if you're a big red meat eater uh, and you can start to cut back on that, uh, that that's another good place to, to start. Choose calorie-free beverages. So cutting out sugary drinks is a big, big deal. Um, the sh high sugar intake can contribute to more inflammation um, as well as other, other problems. So water, mineral water, um, infused water with, you know, fruit. You've seen those containers you can buy that you can put the fruit in the middle or your cucumbers or mint, and it just kind of enhances the taste of the water. Again, become familiar with portion sizes. So that website, the, uh, the choosemyplate.gov. And then kind of separate from the actual food is how you eat it. Slow down. <laughs> don't inhale. Don't eat in front of the TV. Don't eat in front of the computer. Uh, I was talking just a few minutes ago about Italy. It's sacrilege there to have fast food, right? Eating and sitting down and actually having a meal is an event, right? Part of the reason that they end up eating less food, okay? Um, when you eat too fast, you overeat, all right? You've probably all heard it takes 20 minutes for your stomach to tell your head you've had enough. And if you eat too fast, you're much more likely to have more than you need. Sitting down and eating in front of the TV results in mindless eating, eating too much. And every time you sit down in front of the TV or sit in the car where you eat, you start to associate that spot with food. So even when you're not physically hungry, you're sometimes going back for more. Can anybody relate? <laughs> Everybody, raise your hand. So a few tips to make healthy eating easier. Um, don't hesitate to use um, uh, pre-cut or frozen fruits and vegetables. Um, frozen is just as healthy as fresh. Okay, so don't be afraid of frozen. Um, certainly things that are pre-cut are a little bit more expensive, um, but are, are time-saving and uh, make it a little easier. Do try to avoid canned, uh, especially canned vegetables, a little higher in sodium there. Plan ahead. What happens when you don't plan ahead? Fast food. Fast food. Too much convenience food available. I mean, if you don't plan ahead, it's just very easy to run out somewhere and grab something. Um, and you're not running to the grocery store and grabbing a bag of carrots, <laughs> right? You're just not. Make it a family affair. So if there are other people in the house that need a job to do, assign them a job. Set the table, uh, load the dishwasher, whatever it is. If you're the main meal preparer, it doesn't mean every job has to fall on you. Uh, loosen up 
the time you spend and let somebody else do it. Take some time to prep food ahead of time. Does anybody do this? Very good. So if you're doing that, you're front loading your time. You're not having to cook every day if you can't or don't want to. Uh, use crock pots or pressure cookers. Ugh. Does anybody use a pressure cooker? Yeah. It's amazing, right? So, yeah, so I, I got a pressure cooker about five years ago before it really took off. And when my mother-in-law asked me if I wanted a pressure cooker for Christmas, all I could picture was the old pressure cookers that like exploded on the ceiling. And I'm like, ah, I don't want a pressure cooker. Uh, but needless to say, I got one and I love it. Uh, you can cook large quantities. You can cook things super fast. Beans, right? So legumes, black beans, garbanzo beans. And they're practically free when you buy them dry. They're so cheap. And you cook them in the pressure cooker, right? Get curious. You know, um, one of the things that tends to hold us back from making healthy food choices is that we just stick with the same old, same old. Uh, you know, there's a lot more out there than salmon and broccoli for dinner, right? So getting curious is a good way to find new healthy foods. And it's okay if you don't like it on the first try. You can, it's all right, you'll find something else. So how many of you have heard of the Mediterranean diet? Pretty much everybody, right? Well recognized over and over and over again as one of the healthiest meal patterns to follow. I do want to clarify what it's not. The Olive Garden is not the Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet is not anything with olive oil on it. Okay? A lot of times we think, oh, I'll put olive oil on it. That's got to make it healthy. Mm. It is not the same. The Mediterranean diet is something very specific. A meal pattern that focuses on more whole foods and plants over processed foods. Okay? So a traditional Mediterranean diet has very little animal products in it. Okay? Core foods to enjoy. Whole grains. Fruits, vegetables, beans, herbs, spices, nuts, and healthy fats such as olive oil. So there is olive oil involved. It's just not on everything. Okay. They do include um, seafood a couple of times a week on, uh, in, in a Mediterranean, traditional Mediterranean diet. Moderate portions of dairy, uh, eggs, and occasional poultry. Infrequent servings of red meat and sweets. So just in a traditional Mediterranean diet, there's very little red meat involved. Almost always like special occasions, um, there might be some red meat, um, but not on a regular basis. Okay. This is a, just a brief picture of what the Mediterranean diet food pyramid is, um, primarily focused on um, activity at the bottom, right? So being with family, staying active, and then right above that you'll see, um, as far as food goes, the biggest bulk is with plants, okay? Fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. In addition to the Mediterranean diet uh, meal pattern, it also involves sitting down and eating together as a family. That's one of the components of the Mediterranean diet meal plan. And so there are lots of reasons to prepare family meals, all right? We know from pretty strong evidence that it builds stronger family connections. So sitting down together, not letting kids and grandkids just go off and eat in their room uh, with the door closed and um, being cut off from everybody, saves money. Eating out is very expensive, right? Um, improves nutrient intake, lower saturated fat intake, improves school perform performance. In other words, kids who sit down and eat with their families get better grades, get in less trouble, okay? Better mental health, decreases teen substance abuse, increases self-sufficiency. You don't want your kids and grandkids to leave the house only knowing how to eat top ramen. <laughs> so when they are involved in the meal preparation and meal planning, they leave the house at some point knowing what to do, and that's important, right? Preserves food cultures and traditions. I remember my great-grandmother uh, making homemade gnocchi. 
Uh, does anybody know what that is? Yeah, it's a traditional Italian uh, potato dumpling. And it's one of my most fondest memories um, as a kid is watching her prepare uh, this specific meal. So if there are food traditions and cultures that you have that you want to preserve, the best way to do it is those family meals. So we did talk a minute ago about fiber because a couple of you mentioned it a few times. Do you know how much fiber uh, is recommended to eat per day? Anybody know? How many grams? Uh, 25 to 35 grams a day. Okay. Any guesses at how much fiber the average American actually eats? <laughs> Two. A little more than that. 90%, in case you didn't know, that's pretty close to 100, uh, consume less than 15 grams a day. Some reports even have that as low as 6 grams a day. That what that means is that we're not eating enough fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and too much refined or processed food. That's what that means. Okay? There are two types of fiber. There's soluble and insoluble. Okay? Both are important, but soluble fiber is particularly helpful for a couple of, or for a few reasons. Um, one is that it swells in the digestive tract. And what does that do? It makes, makes you feel fuller, right? Slows absorption of sugars and helps reduce cholesterol. Seems to reduce the incidence of colon cancer. Seems like a good thing. And high fiber foods are lower in fat, sugar, and help create that feeling of fullness. And this next picture, picture here is just a visual. So for those of you who are like words, 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 I don't know what any of that means. Uh, this picture hopefully drives that home, right? So these are examples of what 400 calories looks like in the stomach. And obviously it's not perfect, but you get, the, you get the picture here. 400 calories of oil or fat doesn't go very far. 400 calories of fried chicken doesn't take up much room, but when you actually put in um, a high fiber meal with the vegetables included, you can see how that compares to keep you feeling full, right? So fiber only comes from plant foods. There's no fiber in chicken. Okay. Good sources of that soluble fiber we were talking about. Anybody actually cook oatmeal at home, like real oatmeal, right? So not just instant stuff, right? But you put it in the pot, you boil the water, and you cook it. And you go to scoop it out, and it's sticky like paste. That's good. That's soluble fiber. That's what that is, okay? So soluble fiber comes from legumes. What are legumes? Beans. beans, right? Kidney beans, black beans, garbanzo beans. <laughs> Comes from certain vegetables and fruit. So apple uh, flesh is a particularly good source of soluble fiber. Uh, avocados are a good source of soluble fiber. And there are quite a few other examples. Uh, nuts, whole grains, quinoa, barley, and oats are all other examples of that soluble fiber. It is best to avoid food products with added fiber. So you'll commonly find these things like granola bars or cereals. Things like fiber one bars, right? Uh, are candy bars with fiber added. That's what it is. Let's break it down, okay? There is no health benefit to eating foods with added fiber. It really should be integral to the food itself and not added. Okay, does that make sense? So one of the ways, just to kind of really um, emphasize the f importance of fiber, is that if you're getting that 25 to 35 grams a day, you're probably doing a pretty good job uh, eating healthy. If you're not getting 25 to 35, you probably need to reevaluate. Now the budget, anybody on a budget? Raise your hand. Uh, food is the largest percentage of most Americans' household budgets. Um, groceries are expensive, period. Healthy or not, uh, food is, is pricey. So uh, 
Oftentimes, people will say it's too expensive to eat healthy, and I am happy to have the discussion to say, no, it's not, all right? And we've touched on this already a little bit, but whole unprocessed foods cost significantly less than processed or convenience foods, okay? Uh, a good example uh, is carrots. Baby carrots, while they're certainly not expensive, cost significantly more per pound than a bag of whole carrots. But what do you have to do with the whole carrots? You, you, gotta, you gotta spend some time. You gotta wash them, you gotta cut them up. Um, and so that sometimes poses, poses an issue. But it's a good example of how anything processed or convenient costs more money, okay? Uh, when you buy lettuce that's in like the plastic clamshell, it's nice, it's ready to go. Costs a lot more money than buying actual lettuce that you have to wash and cut up and everything, right? But again, it's not the food or the healthy food that's too expensive, it's how it's, how it's processed and, and prepared for us. Produce that's in season, and we're incredibly lucky here in Northern California that we have in season produce almost all year long, right? Uh, and legumes are the least expensive part of your grocery bill. And as we said a minute ago, meats and dairy products uh, and processed foods are much more expensive per serving. Okay. Uh, so there are a lot of reasons that we eat the foods we do. Uh, it has to do with habit. There's a reason that there's the term called um, eating habits. We just do it and never think about it. Uh, and that's part of the reason that we get into certain routines. Uh, time, money, convenience, quality, value. We respond to value, don't we? That meal at the Costco food court? <laughs> Constantly here, it's a dollar fifty for this and that. Is it worth it? Is it really worth it? I mean, probably not in the long run, right? And they make it so easy when you check out at Costco. Do you want to order anything from the food court? No, I don't. Uh, media messages uh, tell us what we think we should buy. And then, of course, um, our culture and ethnicity and traditions are other things that influence how we cook uh, and what we eat. So other tips to control your food budget include always going with a list because you will figure out something to buy that doesn't belong in your cart. Right? And if you find that, give it a ride, put it down somewhere else. Take it out, put it down. You don't have to take it home just because it's in your cart. It's really okay. It didn't commit to you. Um, have a meal plan for the week. If you're making a meal plan, you're, you're probably um, going to do better at the grocery store because you're not just picking things up. Check websites for your uh, favorite stores. You know, there are rewards programs and online coupons that you can... Um, you get when you check out. And I'm, I'm, I'm such a nerd, I get so much flack for it. But I'm a couponer, I don't know, it's weird. And so uh, I will actually use the paper coupon and the coupon I clicked on at my store and I get both. So it's like $2 off a toothbrush, it's pretty cool. So if you have the time, do it. Uh, buy foods that require some prep. So again, we talked a little bit about that already. Uh, if you're interested in saving money, you might have to spend some extra time, okay? Uh, buy fruits and vegetables in season, much less expensive than buying them out of season. So a few resources for you. Um, don't feel like you have to adopt this type of eating pattern overnight. Typically, if you go from zero to 60, um, you're bound to fail. Yeah, you're probably not gonna have the best outcome if you try to do everything at once. Try one or two new things at a time if you are feeling like you need to change. Omit sugary drinks. So if you drink soda, if you drink smoothies, if you drink coffee drinks, start there. Get rid of the sugary drinks little by little. That would be a big, big change. Uh, add one fruit or vegetable to lunches or dinners. Start taking a lunch to work a few days a week because if, if you're leaving home and going to work and eating out, that costs a lot of money. 
and it's probably not the healthiest food. Limit eating away from home to no more than once or twice a week. And when I say eating away from home, I don't mean fast food or sitting down at a restaurant, although those are included. I mean the stop at Starbucks, right? I mean the, um, the quick rush by a convenience store and grabbing something. All that stuff means you're probably not getting some healthy food choices. And then again, remember the picture, half the plate vegetables. Half the plate vegetables. Um, some websites for you, um, AICR.org. So AICR is the American Institute for Cancer Research, uh, and they actually have great recipes um, that are plant-based and include some meat products as well. And they have lots of good information about healthy eating. Uh, CalorieKing.com, has anybody heard of this before? No. no. So CalorieKing.com is a great place to look up that piece of Costco pizza before you eat it. <laughs> okay. Any guesses how many? <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to make you informed is all, really. Any guesses how many calories are in a piece of Costco food court pizza? <laughs> Thirteen hundred. <laughs> Seven hundred. Okay. Uh, and thirteen hundred milligrams of sodium. So if you're watching your sodium, yeah, gotta be careful. But calorieking.com is a great way to look up the nutrition facts for any sort of just general food or food that you're interested in eating out so you can make a more informed choice. I'm not trying to make you unhappy, I'm trying to make you informed. <laughs> CSPINet.org is the Center for Science and the Public Interest, uh, and they actually put out the newsletter that I put down there at the bottom, Nutrition Action Newsletter. Does anybody get this? Yeah. It's a great resource. I really like it because it, it is written in a way that anybody can understand. You don't have to have a bachelor's degree in science or be a doctor to figure out what they're talking about. I think it's a great resource for anybody who gets confused by headlines, um, and they really only base their uh, articles on research. It's not just what's popular. Choosemyplate.gov is where you can go to get some more information about portions. Uh, oldwayspt.org. Make sure you include the PT. Oldways.org is something else very I don't know what that is. Um, but Old Ways is actually a website committed to uh, keeping the traditional food cultures alive uh, around the world. Specifically, they started with the Mediterranean diet. So if you want more information about Mediterranean eating patterns, oldwayspt.org is a good place to go. And, I, and I, every time I say this uh, next one, I feel like I'm copping out, but it's really... I found it so helpful. Pinterest. I don't know if anybody uses their Pinterest app, but it's, I think, a really great resource when you look up the right things. Right? You can't just look up fried chicken recipe. Um, but you can search plate method, vegetable recipes, or Mediterranean diet recipes and get really great information back. So I, I, I've just found it helpful and a good thing to recommend to people who feel like they need a place to start with some healthy recipes. So in conclusion, um, there's an author by the name of Michael Pollan. Has anybody heard of him? Berkeley. I'm sorry? Berkeley. Yes, he is. He's written quite a few books, um, uh, The Omnivore's Dilemma and Eater's Manifesto, a few things. But he said it best. One simple rule. If it came from a plant, eat it. If it's made in a plant, don't. <laughs> Simple, right? Simple. My uncle always said, if it tastes good, spit it out. Good for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe able to apply that from time to time. So details matter. Ask questions. So if there's something called a donut salad, uh, just because the word salad is involved does not mean that it's healthy. All right. Any questions? Mm -hmm. You didn't say anything about insoluble fiber. You said about soluble. Fiber. Yeah. So insoluble fiber is is helpful too. What it does, it's more of the bulking agent that helps um, 
bulk up stool for regular bowel movements. So what are those? Uh, that's mostly found, that's found in mostly vegetables and, and whole grains as well. Okay. Yeah. And most of us are either in single or dual households. How to make the plan manageable. So what I've done for the past 15 years is I will do a healthy, fresh, mostly vegetable recipe and cook maybe eight portions at once. Um, eat one, put one in the fridge, six into the freezer. I do that maybe twice a week. So the heavy cook is twice a week. I then have very things I can pour out as needed. Other nights, um, fish, whole grain, and a veggie, or a fresh salad. Yeah. Yeah. And to beat progresso, I just learned this trick about a month ago. Namely, I make my own homemade veggie or minestrone soup. Just, you know, a can of roast sodium, just that vegetable, toss it together. Uh, well, cook it with some most sodium veggie broth, it's all nice and condensed, stick it back in the freezer, and then just rehydrate with more broth, mm -hmm. low sodium broth, and I'm ready for my low sodium veggie. Yeah, food. yeah. It takes a little bit of time, but in the end, you're really saving time throughout the week. You're having way less time focused on food um, because it's ready. So, perfect. Good. Um, I got a quick question. I have a five month old in the house. He is allergic to lactose and dairy items. What should we do about that? Which is in all formula. Yeah. So, um, ideally, as the five-month-old gets older, they'll grow out of that. It's pretty typical they do. Um, but there are formulas available that aren't made with dairy products. So I would um, just ask your physician which one they recommend. But there are quite a few that aren't made with, with lactose or milk proteins. Okay. Yeah. My wife is trying to find out about like a vegetarian or a vegan substitute. There are those available as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, especially more and more as a lot of more people go more towards um, vegan eating. Those are available. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we've all heard all this stuff before, but the way you presented it made a lot of sense, and I really appreciate that. And good. It's interesting to learn that the, all these people are pushing the smoothies and all that stuff is not, not good fiber. That's something nice to know. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, I think Am we're going time? to uh, one more question. <laughs> you mentioned nothing about organic foods. Uh, not just yeah. Um, organic foods. So um, for every one study that says you must eat everything organic, there's 14 that say you'll be fine if you don't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, here's the bottom line. So uh, if you can't afford organic food, that's probably the best way to go. All right? Um, but... By and, far, by and large, the best recommendation is that um, it's much more important to get your fruits and vegetables in even if they're not organic. So in other words, don't avoid fruits and vegetables because you don't buy organic. You're going to be better off from a health perspective um, by, eat, by getting your fruits and vegetables in even if they're non-organic, if that makes sense. We have one more. <laughs> okay. So, any recommendations about uh, food that can boost your immune system? Uh, what we talked about up here. There, yeah. Basically yeah, there is no specific food or food group that boosts your immune system, but an overall healthy diet um, with the fruits and the vegetables and enough protein intake is really your best bet. Yeah.